I'm sure you've heard about the UN blocking the rebel from attending their international climate change soiree in Marrakesh, Morocco this year. Now the UN denied our application for official accreditation because they say they don't accredit advocacy journalists. We know that is such a fake excuse because the UN does accredit news outlets like the TAI and the National Observer. Both of those are specifically funded by the environmental clearinghouse charity, the Tides Foundation for their climate advocacy. We know it's not that the UN doesn't accredit advocacy journalists, they just don't accredit skeptics. They even accredit communist Chinese state-run news agencies and Putin mouthpieces, but not skeptics because to the UN, the skeptics are more dangerous. So much for the UN protecting free expression and free thought. I guess that's how they protect their claims of climate change consensus. They just lock the lips of the opposition and then they toss away the key. Anyways, the spokesperson for the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, Nick Nuttall, has been dodging inquiries from our lawyers for weeks and ignoring letters from those very same lawyers, Penn Canada, the Canadian Association of Journalists and Canadian Journalists for Free Expression. They've all written letters arguing on our behalf and demanding that we be accredited as, accredited as journalists the same way our pro-climate change peers are. Now, Nick Nuttall ignored everyone, but he didn't ignore the CBC. He actually did an interview with As It Happens and it ended up being a train wreck. He seems to be a bit obsessed with Ezra Levant for some reason, even though the boss never made an application to go to Marrakesh. It was me and two other people. Just listen to a little of this interview. It's just so bad. Here. We know there's always new journalists coming through and we have a look and see what uh, maybe they represent. And um, we looked at rebel media and we just really weren't sure what it was. I mean, it wasn't sure if it was a platform for, for this uh, chap, Ezra. I can't remember his last name now. Levant, Ezra um, Levant. Yeah, okay, fine, yeah. So I don't live in Canada, so I, I don't know. Okay, so this Nick Nettle thinks journalism needs to be balanced and helpful to his alarmist cause to be actual journalism. Well, I did a little journalism. I'm going to take some of Nick Nettle's advice. I'm just trying to provide some balance and to be even a little helpful so that the public can understand just who this UN appointed censor Nick Nettle actually is and how balanced he really is or isn't. And then I'm going to give you my honest opinion. This is a music video that Nick Nuttall, this arbiter of balance and journalistic professionalism made using UN money. He's singing about climate change. Actually, he's scolding us about climate change. Just watch this. I think it's meant for kids. Good Lord, I hope it's meant for kids. You're about to behold something truly amazing and a lot bit crazy here. Say goodbye to lethargy. Des Anthropozin zu lange pflegen wir unsere Distanz zur Welt immer wieder elegant. We are pretending as if we are sovereign through the age of the Anthropocene. We cultivate our distance to this world with a morbid elegance. You guys, Nick Nuttall is so balanced he can ride a hoverboard. That's amazing. And did you catch that line about giving up national sovereignty? What a creep trying to brainwash someone else's kids into surrendering to our global government overlords who incidentally go about silencing journalists and he's using UN money to do it. It's just so weird, but it is exactly what I would expect from the UN. This Nuttall is the guy who called the rebel extremist in print interviews for not agreeing with the UN that putting huge taxes on the products of human respiration like CO2 will save the world from, I don't know, warmer, more temperate, more comfortable weather. It's under zero right here in Alberta, so I have a hard time being sympathetic to all of this. And I politely said nothing about Nuttall while Nuttall tried to smear the rebel, myself, and our supporters in this way as extremist. I've stayed to the issue at hand, freedom of the press, but not Nuttall. He made this personal. 
I will not be judged as unserious by that guy. From where I'm standing, dressing like Ziggy Stardust and Bill Nye had a love child and singing a, singing a duet about climate change and recycling with a woman who's wearing something that looks like a Tinkerbell costume that got all caught up in a wood chipper might seem a tad extremist to some people, right? But I don't want Nuttall censored, however crazy I may or may not think he is. In fact, I want everyone to hear from Nick Nuttall and I want everyone to watch his music video. I believe in free speech, even for Star Trek Marty McFly and his tinfoil coveralls here. I'd even like to invite him to our next Rebel Live event so that he can hear from some of the other extremists like me. He can even bring the hoverboard, or at the very least, his flying canoe. Because I think that would be helpful to the public understanding, don't you? And as for me, well, I'm still going to Marrakesh. I don't need permission from Club 54 Father Earth to do my job. For the Rebel Dot Media, I'm Sheila Gunreed. If you don't think someone as unserious as Nick Nuttall should decide what serious journalism really is, go to letusreport.com and sign our petition.